So HTC's main business these days is pumping out clever industry-leading VR headsets, but its latest effort, the HTC Vive Flow, is a very different beast indeed. These are portable VR glasses as opposed to a full-on headset, which can stream delicious content from your Android phone straight to your face in a proper immersive fashion. Now the pre-order is open today and these VR glasses will be shipping from early November for 499 quid or 499 US dollars. And I've been lucky enough to already have my face inside of the HTC Vive floor. So here's all you need to know and my early impressions. And for more on the latest and greatest set, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, the Vive Floor is designed to be worn on the go, so for instance on those transatlantic flights that you may possibly one day take again, or maybe just the 1042 LNER to Doncaster, basically anywhere that's just not your house. The glasses weigh just 189 grams, so about the same as many smartphones, and they sport a dual hinge system so the Vive Floor can fit any size of bonts, even proper big old melon heads. A snap-on fabric face cushion helps to provide some extra comfort while also blocking out light and the outside world in general, so you can't see fellow commuters silently judging you and your fancy weird eyewear. At first wearing the Vive Floor did feel a bit weird because unlike normal glasses they don't rest on your ears, they just kind of grip your head in a kind of loving hug but after a while I kind of adjusted to it, got used to it and certainly no part of my facial region was aching after around an hour and a half of use. Of course the true test will be really test them out cross country on some sort of long journey to see if you can literally wear them all afternoon long without any discomfort. And of course, because this expensive bit of tech is designed to be taken out and about, you'll probably want to get some sort of protective case for them. The good news is the HTC will actually bundle one with the Vive Floor if you pre-order it. The LCD screen offers 1.6K resolution per eye, so 3.2K res overall, with a 100 degree field of view. So it's not quite as wide as the likes of the Vive Pro 2, but it's not far off. Display quality seems to be well up to any VR task out there. Visuals were definitely sharp and bright enough when I was playing around in virtual experiences, while movies also look pretty damn good too. Plus, the HTC Vive Floor actually features adjustable lenses which can be focused to suit your vision, so if you're short or long-sighted, that can be usefully countered. My left eye in particular is proper balked and the Vive Floor's focusing absolutely dealt with that no problem whatsoever, so you can wear these things and uh, use them comfortably without having to rock glasses or contact lenses at the same time. And as with HTC's more premium VR sets, you get some immersive spatial audio pumped out from the stereo speakers which are actually built into the Vive Floor's arms. While twin mics housed on the front of the Vive Floor help to provide a level of noise and echo cancellation. I did find that those speakers were certainly up to snuff when it came to the various VR experiences that I tested out and there wasn't much bleed uh, to people who were sat nearby either which is always a good thing if you're going to be rocking them on trains, planes etc. Though that said I did find that actually smashy movies from the likes of Marvel did sound a little bit flat through those speakers. And of course you can hear everything that's going on around you at all times as well so good for awareness but if you do want true immersion you're going to want to hook up some headphones. There's no headphone jack unfortunately on the Vive floor, it's going to use a bit of Bluetooth and instead. Of course without any actual content these glasses would just be a slightly bizarre fashion statement. To get them to actually do stuff you will want to pair them to your phone via Bluetooth and then use a bit of Miracast magic to stream your apps. You actually use your smartphone as a controller slash pointer type thing to get your way through the various VR menus and also control your VR apps and experiences as well and it works really well. Obviously your control is quite limited to so basically just pointing and tapping on the screen and uh, occasionally swiping if needed as well but that's about it and to be fair the VR experiences I tested out that worked absolutely flawlessly. At the face-on experience with the Vive Floor, I got to play a game where you murder scurvy pirates with cannonballs, one of those very simple but infuriatingly addictive affairs. I also got the chance to kick back with some Disney Plus action as well. You can basically stream all of the usual video content from your phone straight to your face in the cinema mode, which ably recreates that big screen experience, except obviously without teenagers sitting next to you on TikTok the entire time, talking at each other, using words you don't understand because you're hideously old now. An Alice through the looking glass experience was next, which would most likely be best enjoyed with the kind of pills that your granddad probably doesn't take, or at least not anymore. And I also found some time to get all zen with a meditation app, which did actually help to ease the stress from rush hour London commuting until I had to take off the goggles and do that all over again. Now, if you want to be able to experience a range of different apps and experiences on your fresh new Vive floors, well, HTC is offering a new Vive Port Infinity Vista service. And this will include all kinds of different games and VR experiences and other shenanigans as well, uh, which you can freely download from. I say freely, not freely, because it has a monthly subscription cost of $5.99 
or £5.99 a month, you will be able to get a little discount as well if you appear up front annually. And as for the deeper specs, well, HTC didn't want to reveal which chipset was actually stuffed inside of the Vive floor, but I didn't notice any slowdown at all while gurning my way through various VR experiences. The Vive floor even has its own built-in cooling system as well, which helps to cycle all of that hot air away from your face, keeping the glasses and your mug nice and cool. The Vive floor is powered via USB though, and it does need to be plugged into a power source at all time to function. There is a tiny built-in battery, so the glasses won't immediately switch off if that cable comes loose or whatever but that will only last you a very short time enough time to basically flash up a warning so you can get plugged in again just have it plugged into a uh, laptop usb port that would work just fine a battery pack or even your phone itself although uh, htc does reckon that a 10,000 milliamp battery pack will be fully drained in about five hours so if you do hook up to your phone it's probably going to sap that juice pretty damn fast so right there is my early face on review of the htc vive floor as i say coming Early November for 499 US dollars, 499 Great British pounds. Yeah, quite pricey for sure, but if you do want a portable VR uh, machine to take wherever you roam, then certainly it's definitely one of the lightest, most compact options out there. And hopefully be well supported uh, via the Vive port, Vista, whatever the f it was. So that's what I think, but what do you find for good home? I reckon it'd definitely be great to hear you down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Make yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you.